Okay, we are back. This is Math 200. We're looking at Chapter 10, and this is 10.3, except I'm going to pop back to 10.2 quick, back to page 10 in the note packet, and we're taking one more look at that problem that we got to here. Six over 12, 12 times 18, and we had the 216. If you take 0 0.06 divided by 12, that's 0 0.005 plus one is 1.005. All right, to the 216th power and then times 5,000. And so when you take one point, you do this first in your calculator, 1.005 to the power 216, hit enter you'll get almost three, 2.9367659972. And just leave that in your calculator and then just hit the times button and then 5,000. And so that'll, that'll give you accurate all the way out to the 12 places. And so then um, 14683.82986. And so we're looking at $14,683.83. So that was on page 10 of the notes, um, example J, it was under J. It gave you the 5,006% compounded monthly. That's why the 12s are there for 18 years. Okay. Okay, now on to 10.3. Oh, if you left at 82, that would also be okay. Banks don't actually round up to the next penny. Because that ends up being a lot of pennies. So they truncate. They don't round. Um, they actually reference that in uh, Superman 3. And then they reference referencing Superman 3 in um, Office Space, which is a funny movie too. That was how they were gonna scam the company was the plot from Superman 3. <clears throat> Not the new ones, the Christopher Reeve ones. All right, so now, um, what does logarithmic functions look like? So a logarithmic function, remember, so what is this? If we graph exponential function where base is greater than one, this is the exponential function. All right, we did that already multiple times in 10.2. Uh, but in 10.3, they want us to look at um, the inverse. So the inverse of this function, actually, remember, it flips it over y equals x. So it ends up being like this, where instead of approaching x, it's approaching negative y. And instead of going up infinitely up x, it's going kind of up infinitely over y. So that's uh, called, the inverse function is called the logarithmic function. So this is called the log function. That's exponential growth. This is the log function. Log functions are the inverse of those. All right, so now everything you wanted to know about logs, but were afraid to ask. Logs are really just a fancy way of writing exponents. So log base four of 16 Really, all of this is, all this is, is a fancy way of saying 4 to what power gives you 16. That's what's, that's what's being questioned here. And so that's pretty easy, right? We did that already, 4, and then this would be 4 squared, and that would be 4 to what power? So 2. So if you, log base 4 of 16, that equals 2. What the log is, is a fancy way of writing the exponent, that's all it is, okay? So you're thinking, what do I take this space by to what power gives me this number? And the answer is two. All right, so let's look at another one. Um, log of eight, log base eight of one eight is what? Well, think about that. Eight to what power gives you one over eight? Remember, that's one over eight to the first. So if I just had a negative one there, that would move it down to the bottom, right? So eight to the negative one power gives me one eighth. That's negative one. 
All right, number three. Log base three of the square root of three is what? Well, now think again. This is three to what power gives me the square root of three, but remember, the square root of three can be expressed as three to the one half power. So that is three to what power gives me three to the one half power, that's just one half, all right? So logs are just kind of a fancy way of writing exponents, that's all. So let's look at more log problems. 5 to the 4th equals 625. They want me to write this as a log. So you would say log base 5 of 625 is equal to the power 4th. So remember, it's lonely on top. This is up, this is exponent. You know, you've heard that saying. That's they weren't talking about math, obviously, but it's lonely at the top. Powerful people are lonely. The power is the thing that's all by itself. All right. I uh, had a way to memorize this when I first learned it. I just put log base 10 of 100, because you can do that in your calculator. If you just hit LOG and then 100, it'll kick out 2. And then I thought to myself, okay, if log base 10 of 100 is 2, how would I rearrange this into an exponent? So 10 squared equals 100. And so now you see where all the pieces fit. This goes there, this goes as the base, this goes over as the power. You know what I mean? So at the top of my test that I took on logs, I wrote that little key for myself so I know knew where the pieces fit. So I could take this, put it as the base, Take that, put it over by itself, and take that and put it right after the log. All right? Um, two. Two to the negative three equals one eighth. So what does that mean? Well, that means log base two of one eighth is equal to the power. It's lonely, powerful people are lonely, all by itself, negative three. Which does make total sense. Two to the negative three power is one over two to the third. 2 to the third is 8. That's 1 eighth. So if I take 2 to the negative 3, I get 1 eighth. All right, 3. 4 to the 1 third power is equal to the third root of 4. Okay, so this is log base 4 of the cube root of 4 is equal to 1 third. The power goes over by itself, this goes after the log, that goes as the base. All right. Okay, lovely doubly. Um, so we found two negative one and one half, and we wrote those as logs. How about solving some other problems like this again? different numbers and I will eventually show you how to do these in your calculator also it's a little change of base formula I went and grabbed my calculator so log base 2 of 32 is what well think about what's being asked 2 to what power is equal to 32 that's what's at play here that is 2 to the fifth power is equal to 32 um, Log base 4 of 2 is equal to what? Well, 4 to what power gives you 2? Well, that's the square root. The square root of 4 is 2. So that's to the 1 half power. 4 to what power gives you 2? And that would be 1 half, right? So this answer is 5. This answer is 1 half. Well, let's look at 3. Log base 5 of 1 25th. That one's a little tricky, right? So 5 to what power gives you 1 25th? So that's 1 over 5 squared. And remember, we want the bases to be the same. So 5 to what power? You'd move that up and make it negative. So 5 to the negative 2. Oh, that's a really ugly 5. So it's negative 2. That one was a little tricky. Okay. What if they get um, a variable?
variable in there can we solve? And the answer is, well, certainly we can. So they got a variable worked in here, log base six of x is equal to two. Well, let's write this as an exponential. Look, six to the power two has to equal the number after the log. And so that's just 36. So after you write it from out of log into just exponential form, piece of cake, right? Easy peasy, six squared, 36. Um, log base x of 81 equals four. Yeah, this one's a little trickier because it's x to the fourth power equals 81. And so now you have to think back. When I did x squared was equal to 81. Um, I take plus or minus the square root x to the fourth. I would take plus or minus the fourth root of 81, and I would get x is equal to positive or negative 3, only there is a stipulation. Log bases are not allowed to be negative because negatives would create an alternating, you know, the first would be negative, the second would be positive, the third would be negative. So negatives are not allowed to put in logarithms for bases. So we throw away the negative part and it's just three. So that one was a bit trickier. Um, the last one does trip up students too. Let's take a look at that last one. That's log base three of one is equal to x. Well, think about that. 3 to what power, to x power, 3 to the x power is equal to 1. Well, anything to the 0 power is 1. So regardless of what this is, this could be log base 7 of 1 equals x, and it would be x equals 0, no matter what. Log base 25 of 1 will equal 0. Anything, when this is a 1, no matter what this log is, the answer is going to be to the 0 power. Because remember, anything to the zero power is one. All right, then they have some special cases. If I have log base four of a number, and then that number has a power on it, it ends up just being the power, it's just six. Like, think about it, it's asking four to what power gives me four to the sixth power? Well, that's six, you know? They, they kind of gave you the answer right there in the question. Um, this one is just weird. So if I have log um, seven to the log base seven of negative three, I, there should be parentheses there. You should add parentheses to that. Add parentheses to that. It is just whatever. So seven to the log base seven of a number, it's just the number. And so um, they have that as the third rule up there. So log base B of one is zero. I, I talked about that already with that problem. Um, log base four of four is six. That's just like number two. And this is just like number three, but there should really be parentheses on there so you don't think it's minus it isn't minus three, it's log base seven of negative three. And so when there's a negative there, it's um, proper form to put parentheses in there. I forgot to get those typed in. Sorry about that. All right, so let's look at a couple of graphs of exponents. And then we're on to 10 four, good buddy. Okay, so graphs of exponents or um, logarithmic functions, which are just a fancy way of writing an exponent, is the way to do a graph, if you're gonna do it by hand, is to basically write it out as um, an exponent. So they have y equals log base two of x. So instead of this, we would write two to the y power that's equal to x. 
and now we would do like an XY chart. So we would actually pick Y values, put them in there and figure out what X is because this is what defines X. So we'd say, well, when Y is two or one or zero or negative one or negative two, what's going on with X? Well, two, you put in Y, two squared is four. Two to the first is two. Two to the zero is one. Two to the negative one is one half. Two to the negative two is one fourth. And now we just graph those. So four, one, two, three, four, comma two, that's right there. Two, comma one, that's right there. One, comma zero, that's right there. And then one half, half on X is down one on Y. And then one fourth, so even closer to zero, is down two. And so you get this logarithmic function. So it's approaching the negative y-axis, but it'll never cross it. All right. And then if we look at another graph on the next page, page 17, in your note packet. We got x is equal to one half to the y power and then y. So this was log base one half of x, y is equal to that. So we'd say one half to the y is equal to x. And so again, we would pick y values, two, one, zero, negative one, <clears throat> negative two, and squared is one fourth, so the first is one half, anything to zero power is one. Negative one is pod, it's two, right? It brings it up. Negative two, it takes a two squared to the top, it's four. And so if we take a look at this, where there's a fraction as a base and log, you can't have fractions, you cannot have negative, but you can have fractions. So um, x is one fourth, so really close to zero, that's up at two. Uh, one half, again, between zero and one, that's at um, one. One zero, two, negative one, and four, negative two. And so this log rhythmic is um, approaching a positive y. Never crossing it though. All right. Okay, we'll stop this video and the next one will be 10.4.